talking about uh, Neil Bagh and its effect on and impact on other areas of your work. I'd like you to also look at, uh, Neil Bagh was a small organization, but it had a wide impact. No? So on teacher education, on uh, different schools also, and policy makers also. Even NCF 2005, they were informed of Neil Bagh in a sense, through other areas also. So, how do you think that uh, that impact, in which areas did it impact? You know, one thing that it impact was in, <clears throat> impacted in, I think, most, in, in a concrete way, uh, was more than teacher education, I think it actually impacted in textbooks, learning material for children. I'm giving it the short form of textbooks and I'm not using the word textbooks in like, you know, the run of the mill textbook, but good ones, you know, the way it should be. Because when uh, the Hoshanga Science Training Project, when they started looking at the primary, so that was called the Prathamik Shiksha Karikram as Prashika is the short form. And when Prashika was being done, they got together, the Hoshangabad people, the Eklavya people, they got a whole team of people with them. So by then, Prashika happened <clears throat> in the late 80s uh, and very late 80s and early 90s. By then, you know, they knew about Neelbagh, for example, uh, not in great detail maybe, but in sufficient detail. I'm not quite sure how. One source was Rohit Dhankar, of course. I don't think you were the source, N not at that time, maybe later. And I'm not sure how else, because I know I went to Eklavya. I mean, I used to go there from 87 onwards because Viva Ben had gotten, they had got in touch with Viva Ben, Ms. Patsati, and that's how I was roped Sushmita. into it. And Sushmita Banerjee, who worked in uh, Rajasthan, she was at there at the same time. When right, 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 right. So that was another source, possibly. But <clears throat> I know that, uh, and also Poonam indirectly, you know. Uh, but uh, because Poonam also knew about Neelbag when I met her formally, you know, uh, that, that would be, of course, much uh, earlier, later for the BLT thing. But what I'm saying is that at that time, the Eklavya people, they had got LA and LDS. And they wanted, in fact, they got me onto it primarily because I was, I had been to Neelbagh. And they had a whole source of many other uh, learning material that had come from various sources in, especially in North India. People who were doing different things on their own and small big things, all, all sorts of things, you know. And the usual stuff also from NCRT. So those were all looked at very thoroughly and then things were evolved and the Prashika textbooks are again very comprehensive. They are not one subject. They are, they've, they've tried out different things. It's unlike their science uh, level. The science ones are science and social studies. Excellent textbooks, very, very child friendly and very integrated and everything where the children, <laughs> where the children do things. But Prashika was also like that except Prashika was had all subjects in one book because their thing was that in especially in the rural and tribal areas to have a number of textbooks is very difficult you know it confuses them i mean apart from the costs and all the whole management of the whole thing so they were comprehensive and it was only in class five that this split because clearly maths and science needed something separate from language they were very interesting and a lot of things from, came from me also, which was some change, some not change. So in textbooks, I think they had a bigger impact directly, indirectly through various sources. In teacher education and actual teacher education, except 
see suppose whatever Rohit Dhankar did as an educator or what you did as an educator, teacher educator, that was in one sense in only in your sphere of work or in Rohit's sphere of work or maybe to a little small extent even Malti also must have trained some teacher, you know. I do not know how many teachers Ushan Narsiman trained, but they must have tra trained a few as part of their schools. So, those were more localized. But to see, see an impact on larger policies and teacher education, I have not seen that. You would be knowing better about that. I do not see that happening because I do not see uh, exactly that approach. I mean, even BLED, uh, BLED is a very open uh, structured uh, curriculum, at least what uh, Nargis Panchkapikeshan and, uh, and um, Poonam had done in the, with that team. Subsequently, it changed, you know. Uh, because again pressures of exam and tests and things, but it was it still was not quite the uh, it, it did not give you space to study on your own, which I think is an important thing. I feel you know, they did not understand it fully. Like you, said, you see they, they did not understand and it was also impractical because if you have a course in a university you you have a class of 50 or 40 or whatever how are you going to give them space to study on their own? By the time they get back home commuting in you know through various whatever they are, they are commuting through various modes of transport, that space is not there. Neelbag was possible because we were living there. I think that was one very big difference and we were living attached to a school where that was being done. That again does not happen. So, even those teacher training programs which have a you know like an experimental school attached to it like CIE the Department of Education in Delhi has, but those teachers do not go there, there is nothing terribly new happening there. Sometimes there is, sometimes there is not. But say like Rishi Valley, MGML, mm -hmm. multi-grade, multi-level, the rural mm -hmm. school mm -hmm. has been adapted and that has been influenced by Neil Bhag mm -hmm. in a sense mm -hmm. through Shan Narsimhan. So, that has been taken to many states. Of course, Tamil Nadu I know that mm. is taken to the whole state. And so, Tamil Nadu schools are more like Neelbag schools? Were at one time. Class 1 to 4 was mixed age group. Mm. They had learning materials mm. and children had to could work at their own pace. Mm. So, that was a big thing to have it across so 37,000. Absolutely, I agree. Even though it was for a short time. But, but the point I am making is… Karnataka. Sure. So, but the point I am making is that in teacher training to yeah. implement it, it is far more difficult because in teacher training what at the end of the day you have to allow them that self-study, they have to have space, space also not just time but space and uh, you know resources to, to the books and material that we had. That is not there. Unfortunately, in most of the courses you know teacher training courses that I see whether I mean diet has improved hugely I know that their curriculum has become much better but if I look at the material when I ask my students in BLED I mean I used to ask them I do not teach anymore uh, have you read Montessori mm -hmm. yes. no we know who she is I said so yeah. I also know mm -hmm. Algu Prasad who is your peer so mm -hmm. what do you know about him I mean you know that is a silly response to give but that is what they would say, they would, somebody would give me a kind of a tiny little brief thing which clearly came from notes that have been culled from somewhere. So, nobody read the original, nobody has read Piaget, I used to berate, you know they used to say ma'am what is your problem, you are not doing, I said what do you mean what is my problem, my problem is you are not reading the classics, what do you mean by, if you are studying Piaget, why are you reading your notes, pick up the book and read, they are very cheap. You take my copy and photocopy it. Yeah, I think yeah, that's how you got the crux of the problem in a sense. I feel because though David was on the teacher commission, they took the surface level kind of things that they are not even the theory, just surface level, and didn't go dig deeper, and so did not. Yeah, it. it cannot be implemented. That's my point. Is that that's the problem you see. It cannot be. So, spaces like this can only be like beacons to, for change. They cannot actually be, if, because if you look at what is there, I mean after all you are not going to change the government school system. 
By change, I mean, yes, you can change the system, but the structures would still be there. So the structures wouldn't be that there would be a school and a space and a library and this and that, and that would be uh, self-sufficient in some ways, at least to some ways. For how many system. people? Yeah. How many people? So it's not numbers, it's also the facilities, and I'm calling them, okay, facilities is the wrong word. What should be there, the amenities, infrastructure. infrastructure that should be there. It's not something special, it should be there for everybody. So I realized very, you know, very early that if I have to do something with what I have learned, which is why I went into textbooks and I wasn't the one who pushed myself. Actually, it was Gayatri Murthy. Mm -hmm. She is the one who said that, why don't you take workshops? And when I started taking workshops, uh, she persuaded my principal to let me go. Of course, she would have been persuaded otherwise also. She said, you should write now. <coughs> we will collaborate. I said, no, I can't collaborate. <laughs> because, I mean, much as I think, I think very highly of her, but A, she's not a primary person. So we were looking at primary and by then I had really started focusing on that age group in terms of everything, you know, what they were doing. So, which is why, you know, she's, I said, okay. So she sort of pushed me towards it. And then this publisher was, they were again open to the whole thing and they were willing to ex listen to my idea and change and tell me what they felt was a problem in making it accessible to teachers and how I could then adapt and, you know, so there was a meeting point, there was a conversation. And that I think was important because naturally I couldn't bring everything that David did over there. It was not possible. I mean, after all, learning about living and let's discover science did not catch on. Those who liked it, they loved it, but it did not catch on. So we had to do somewhere, you know, halfway, halfway, you know, somewhere meeting point sort of a thing. That was one thing. Teacher training, uh, to some extent, we led not because of Neil Bagh, but I think because of many sources coming from many way, because, you know, in terms of approaches to and attitudes to education, over the years had changed. So it became a far more democratic and far more, you know, open space, not just for teacher trainees, but ultimately went to teachers. But again, it went to the schools. No? Now in schools, you might have a great teacher in college, but in the school, the principal and the, you know, the faculty is there. I'm not saying they are to blame. On the contrary, I have found wonderful government school teachers, you know, who in spite of everything, they are able to, you know, touch the lives of the children and the children remember them and think that they have, so that's great here. Yeah? I mean, I think that's wonderful that they have given, left such an impact. But you know, as a system, it's, I don't think that there is very much change. So which is why it, I feel really, really disturbed when I go into schools and I see these very bright children, you know, who are ready to respond to things. But when I think of how they are, See, I'll give you an example. As part of the theatre work that I do with Janna Timanj, we have often gone to schools. Now, some years ago, we had a, we had, we had a play called Tathagat, which also raised the caste question, as well as gender, you know, all sorts of things, okay, in a mythical thing. Play is very powerful, it's very accessible, and the class 11, 12 children, after watching it, they would love it. There would be a kind of a discussion. And all the government schools, you know, they, their responses were wonderfully mature, very perceptive, and they took it, you know, beyond. But somewhere at the back of their minds and the teachers was the end of the thing. So what did you learn? I'm never going to ask this question. God, no, I don't know what I learned here. I mean, it's And like, you learn a zillion things. Exactly, exactly. So what did you learn is, is something that teachers love to, so you know, I would ensure that no teacher spoke before the uh, discussion. I would just butt in slightly rudely. Because the first thing they would say, ha, tali bajao, very good, very good. Acha bacho to kya sikha? What did you learn? Prak, there goes the discussion. So if the teacher isn't there and we go, oh, it's fine. But this is something that even good teachers say. Yeah, I, coming from here, huh. I know you have a view of theatre and education. Would you like to talk about that? Yeah, I think like everything else, uh, theatre, I mean for little children, I, when we say theatre, 
theater in the classroom in the classroom especially or even for children is not the theater that is for adults that is something to understand and who am i to say people have written about it i mean genuinely lots and lots and in india meera mahadevan has written about it for example and uh, so has um, and it, of course you know other people abroad have written in theater in education what i think theater sh- what i've been trying to do is is that how to make these processes of or these things that we do in theater help as a as a path to learning after all when you are making a play and you are trying to create a play you do many little exercises big and small in order to bring out whatever idea you are trying to bring out right so we do not just exercises but we do processes also sometimes plays are written and then they are simply done but there are many ways of you know evolving a play i would say that if i am able to use all the elements of theater which uses the body the sound the space objects you know the the speech your gesture everything if that can be used in education in in the actual imparting in the classroom i'm saying just watching plays and children doing plays is one sort of thing i think children should watch all plays good bad and different uh, preferably good ones but even if they can't get doesn't matter if they watch so i find that often children who have watched ramleela which may be completely you know over the top and everything but because they are there they 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 catch on to theatrical things much faster i mean there is you know you you after all what is theater it is not recreating it's it's actually using metaphors and it's actually using in one sense another language to say things and if the child is understanding that uh, then come on yeah that's a lot of thought going that the child is understanding it's not maths but it's theater and so they're using different mental skills what i mean is different different mental skills is what they're using right okay so what's go- going wrong with it sorry what's going wrong with theater and education theater and education what i think people are not doing enough is i think children are not watching enough theater <clears throat> as i said good bad and different at least indifferent let it what forget about good there is very little theater for children which is accessible to many children i'm not even most even public schools private schools in delhi or in the bigger cities not they don't get to watch many plays except what their annual plays which may be very good but that's only one play or maybe one more that's one thing that is not happening secondly i think not enough theater for chil- with children i mean there are not enough people who are working with children to create plays which should be really at the middle school and above because what happens is a lot of people in education parents of course do because that's what they are taught by the teachers that if you do theater it will develop your personality as if learning maths will curb your personality and einstein einstein did theater i mean he was such a vocal man and a genius come on science made him that it was the brilliance of his mind and he was a socially conscious person it's not as if that he got stuck in whatever he was doing he had things to comment upon the world what was happening and the and the and the and the you know the the bad things that were happening in the world the all that i mean the biases that were there he, he did write and talk about that so my point is that anything that you learn truly will develop your personality doesn't matter what it is it doesn't have to be only theater it of course not what does theater do again a wrong notion that somebody who is a good actor will be a great speaker why actors learn lines and speak it's not their head. so you can be a great speaker about something that you are interested in you ask me to talk about music i'll run away i don't know you ask me to talk about just now talked of einstein the- theory of relativity i'll say it was brilliant but i can't explain it but you ask me to talk about children i will because i know that it has nothing to do with theater it's to do what i know about yeah so a lot of parents and teachers feel that children who are shy they will become vocal and outgoing if they do theater my first question is who the hell are you to change a child's personality if a child is quiet let the child be let the child talk when she wants to you don't have to 
make a child talk you have to just let the child feel comfortable and if the child doesn't want to talk fine i mean i don't think all children want to talk and if they don't want to that's fine we we don't think that we have notions of behavior of of you know good public behavior why should everybody be a public speaker no because somewhere secretly they think it will get them jobs in interviews i don't know maybe it will maybe it won't i tell parents that there should be some people to listen also <laughs> If everyone's talking all the time. No, but this is a wrong notion of theater. You see, so that is the other thing. You know that for me, theater isn't that. For me, theater is in fact another process of learning. And if I can use that process in learning some things, that fine. Of course, you can't learn everything. If I have to learn trigonometry, I don't think theater is going to help me. But if I am doing something in, uh, you know, say. to take an example from the ncert book only uh, of you know the life in a village and life in a slum area in a city uh, around the issue of filling water so you tell children that okay in a slum because it's written over there it's explained what do you think the scene will be this group stand like that uh, no 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 sound just now So they all stand in a line, one pulling, one pulling. Sorry, I'm sorry. Pulling here. Hey, no, no, no. Okay. Said, no, no. Without sound, you do it because you know. Let's not have noise. Just do the actions. And when I clap, you stop. Just statue, and they stop. And when you're going there to collect, take water in the river, because they tell me that they'll take it from the river. It's in the book. How will you go? So they are little far apart. Somebody is close. Somebody is, but they are casually walking down, little fast, and they stop. So visually, they see. something they also realize that space is also there so the near the uh, river there is more space in the slum where there is only one tap there is little space and then when you get them to here okay now do the sounds here everybody is shouting and actually abusing each other and in the village there may not be water because i point out that the river may not have enough water also remember that or the or the pond let us say or the uh, well what are they doing because there is space they are talking and they are, when they are talking they are talking about what to do now with this so little water they are talking and sharing there so sometimes you know that also is different not that people don't fight i'm sure people fight in villages i mean you know I, what i mean is that i wanted to tell not let children get a wrong idea you know so there they are using the body this is a very simple exercise in theater that you do using sounds and the body i simply adapted it there and there are a zillion examples of that in social sciences in or in those areas in uh, languages it's very easy to do in science i would much prefer to do tons of experiments, experiments. nothing to meet the magic of experiments that's the best thing to do unfortunately maths no you can only do not very many things i mean da make a triangle make a right 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 angle make a obtuse angle no no apart from that there is very little scope you know i mean geometry yes addition there are these games i'm going to give a number you know everybody groups and then i will give you know i will use the multiples of that number they don't know and they'll have to so physically they understand i'm not sure it's much easier to do it with concrete material according to me learning maths that is you know montessori zindabad types you know to do it that way or if people have quiznea rods why not but uh, i don't think that mechanically it can come in like that so i would say more theater for children uh, with and children. and with children and those people who are doing in the classroom they must have a knowledge of theater and of pedagogy otherwise it won't work otherwise they'll do mechanical things which is what is happening unfortunately no,